So today we come together as a community to celebrate pride and to support, uh, to be here in solidarity with the members of the LGBTQ community. This month of June is recognized across the United States as Lesbian, Gay, Bisexual, Transgender, and Queer Pride Month to honor the 1969 Stonewall Riots in Manhattan, New York, a tipping point for the gay liberation movement in the United States. The first LGBTQ Pride March was held on June 27, 1970 in Chicago. LGBTQ individuals have made important contributions here in the borough of Carteret throughout our nation's history and around the world. A point of history, the state of New Jersey became one of the first states to legalize same-sex domestic partnerships and officially legalized same-sex marriage way back in 2013. Marriage Equality Act became law on June 26, 2015, when the Supreme Court of the United States ruled that same-sex marriage is protected by the Constitution. That ruling broke down barriers across our nation because so many states still chose to discriminate against members of the community. This week was a very important milestone in civil rights. This past week on Monday, June 15th, 2020, the Supreme Court of the United States, against all odds, ruled against the Trump administration and ruled that LGBTQ workers are protected by Title VII of the 1963 Civil Rights Act. They said to the Trump administration, to federal governments and to private companies, you cannot discriminate against somebody because they are gay or lesbian, bisexual, transgender, or queer. As I mentioned, this was uh, quite a shock, knowing the Supreme Court and the breakdown of that Supreme Court. Uh, many members of the community and many others watching from the sidelines did not think that was possible. So we applaud them for standing up and doing what was right. LGBTQ rights are basic human rights, and whereas Carteret is a melting pot of all ethnicities, sexualities, genders, and creeds, I'm happy to join with our members of the Borough Council. I see Councilman A.J. Joho, Councilman Susan Naples, and members of our community here today in support of LGBTQ Pride Day and GSA Day as we celebrate pride and we raise the flag representing the LGBTQ community. We also have with us um, our coordinator, Dylan from Pathways. Give him a round of applause. I see him standing in the back. And we have a few um, speakers, but we're going to raise the flag and then we're going to have a few speakers come up and say a few words. So if you join me, Arnold will come over there and make that long walk to raise the flag. You know, in 2020, it seems like this has been going on for many years, but it's still fairly new. This is our fourth or fifth pride flag raising, and there still are so many towns and many states that don't take the opportunity to celebrate. Somebody asked earlier what we thought the crowd would be, and I said, you know, this is the first flag raising we've had since the pandemic. Remember, there's still so many people suffering from COVID-19, and you've watched the states that have opened up early because they said to hell with the masks, to hell with the hand washing and the gloves and sanitizing. And those states like Florida and Texas and many others are now experiencing thousands and thousands of new cases every single day, uh, something that New Jersey and New York went through a few years ago, actually a few months ago. So some of our speakers coming up, I know we have uh, Hanifa. She can talk about her experience uh, and do a little uh, poetry reading. So Hanifa, if you come up here and say a few words. A little warm up here. <laughs> oh, that's my voice. Anyway. Hi, everyone. <laughs> Just give me a second. I got to get my notes. I'm back. <sighs> All right. So. All right. 30 seconds. Some of you know me as a bisexual icon. Some of you know me as that rando chick with dreads who walks down the street half the time. But I just go by Hanifa. My pronouns are she and her. This is my first speech as a high school graduate and my last speech as a member of Carter and High School's GSA. Give me a second to cry it out. <laughs> um, the GSA has changed my life so much. Because I stand here as someone 
who used to be afraid of herself, her feelings, her thoughts. I stand here as someone who's ashamed to be different than the other kids. Then I was sent to Pathways. And that's where I met Anna. Well, <laughs> Anna, my first counselor. She, um, she helped me a lot. Whew. She was the first counselor who ever saw me. Not just me, Hanifa, the student. I mean, me, Hanifa, the person. And it's been a while back then since I've ever met anyone who knew me as a person, especially an adult. Because, you know, I was always just the kid to push in the back or the kid to give the grade aid essay. But I was never Hanifa. I was always that. Anna talked to me for the first time, and she wanted to continue to talk to me because she thought, excuse me, but she thought I was pretty freaking amazing. <laughs> so that's what I did. I talked to her until, sadly, she decided to ditch me and go to the Carteret Middle School. Yeah. I take personal offense to that. <laughs> but I believe, was it sophomore year I met you, Dylan? I met a pretty grade A intern who then also ditched me, <laughs> but then came back. And that's Dylan. Now, Anna and Dylan have saved me in many ways, in some ways, in a literal sense, because meeting the both of them, even separately. I've had times where I've fallen so deep into a rabbit hole, I never thought I can climb out. Talking to Dylan and talking to Anna made me realize that I've got too much potential, too many gifts to not give to this world, as do all of you. If you ever have a time where you just, you fall too deep and you're just afraid, talk to someone. Shit, talk to a teddy bear, it works, I swear. They may not answer, but they listen. Very good. So, remember that. Uh, they've given me confidence to be able to speak to you guys, because I'm telling you, four years ago, I would not be able to do this. I'm shaking already, imagine me as like a tiny little freshman. I'm shaking in cowboy boots, I'm telling you. It is bad. <laughs> oh gosh. I want to thank you guys from the bottom, top, all of my little gay heart, because you guys have helped me, seriously. GSA is like my second home. Pathways is my 1.5 home, because home is always going to be home. And to my GSA members who may not all be here, but you guys are, you guys are awesome. You're my little cubs, my little, my little pride. It's cute. <laughs> and you guys made me realize that I can help people, and I want to continue to do that. So thank you, all of you tiny little people back there. Yeah, I see you hiding. Yeah. <laughs> and speaking of speaking, I am going to read two poems from Just the Way I Am, the journal Affirmations for LGBT Youth by Elizabeth D. Gray. We're going to flip through here. And the first one I'm going to read is supposed to be bookmarked. Give me a second. One second. I found it. All right. Um, it's called Let Love Win. Woo. On the days when love doesn't stand a chance against the backdrop of a difficult struggle, let love win. When the odds are blank and it seems there isn't the strength to keep holding on, let love win. When hope f feels so far away and making the effort to try again seems like a lost cause, let love win. Let love win by refusing to surrender. Let love win by trying just one more time. Let love win by getting up after you fall. Let love win by embracing love in all its forms at the end of the day, just find a way to let love win. Thank you. And did you do 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 do? 
I had one. It was in here. Oh, strong. I like that one. This is going to be my last one. And then I'm going to hopefully give the mantle to someone else. You are stronger than you think. Stronger than you know. Stronger than the mixed messages of the world. Stronger than the naysayers and the negativity prone. If you dare to believe you are infinitely strong, then nothing can stop you. All you have to do is know. You are stronger than the obstacles, stronger than setbacks, stronger than that. Than that tidal wave bearing down, because that wave that you see coming has no idea how well you can swim. You are stronger than you think, stronger than misguided criticism of those without vision, stronger than doubt, stronger than fear. You are stronger than you think. All you have to do is know. I hope you guys continue to be strong. Thank you. Okay, I'm leaving, I'm leaving. You can do better than that. Give Hanif a round of applause. I see Councilman Vinnie Bellino is here with us as well to support our community today. Give him a round of applause. Imani, is Imani here? Okay, Imani's here. She's going to be speak speaking about her own personal experience within the community. Give uh, Imani a round of applause as she comes up here to say a few words. <laughs> Hi, um, I'm Imani Dezume. Um, some of my friends know me as Devine and more recently, Kaden. <laughs> so, GC has helped me a lot. It helped help me um, come to terms with my sexuality, come to terms with my feelings, and everything that I thought I would hate about myself. I didn't really, I didn't really know about that, I didn't really know that gay was something that was accepted, something that I could be, until Rowan introduced me to DSA. Um, I used to move a, I used to move around a lot, and I saw a lot of kids get teased for being gay, teased for being different, and I was always scared. I remember when I was in fifth grade, there was this boy who I was friends with, and he was gay, and there was always these kids who would pick on him. I know one time I found him crying, saying that he wished he wasn't gay. He wished that he could be dip he could be similar to everyone else. And that caused me to be scared that the same thing would happen to me. <laughs> but now I'm proud of who I am. I'm proud that I'm gay. Well, bisexual. I'm proud that I'm bisexual. And I've also learned that uh, I'm gender fluid. Sometimes I feel like a male, sometimes I feel like a female, sometimes I feel, <laughs> sometimes I feel nothing. And if I don't, <laughs> and if it wasn't for all my friends, family, I wouldn't have been able to be up here speaking, talking about this. Um. I had something prepared and it just completely blanked my mind. Like I feel like even if I bring out my notes, I wouldn't be able to. <laughs> but um Oh my god, I'm sorry. Great job. <laughs> but um I don't. I I remember I was I remember I wrote something in my not diary but a journal, and in it it said, "I know that I'll always be who I am, but sometimes I want to change that, and I know that's wrong." 
but it will always be how I feel inside. And I know that there are people around me who will help me think differently, but I know that I know that I always I always hate myself. And I wrote that I think two months ago. And over the quarantine, I've been talking to Rowan, also known as Shardina. And slowly, I've gotten over that hatred. And I've come to terms, well, more, more to terms of who I am. And I'm hoping that I will continue to love myself instead of hate myself. And I'm hoping that everybody in the GCA and everybody in my community <laughs> will help me love myself more. That was a very moving speech, Imani. We're very proud of you for coming up here and sharing your experience. And know that absolutely love yourself because our community loves you. The GSA community loves you. Give her a round of applause. Uh, is Tristan here? Tristan, come on up. Tristan's going to talk in honor of the um, lives that were lost at the Pulse nightclub shooting several years ago, as well as his own experience in the community. Tristan, we're happy to have you with us, and podium is yours. Hey everyone, um, so this is my first time speaking up here today. I'm going to give a little introduction. My name is Tristan Roldan. I am 17 years old and I'm going into my senior year in Carter High School. So first off, I want to start by talking about the Pulse nightclub shooting in Orlando. The shooting was on June 12, 2016, and the main target was the LGBTQ people of the club. At 2 a.m. that morning, 49 unsuspecting men and women were shot and killed. Another 58 were injured. It is important to keep this tragedy in our hearts due to it being deemed a terrorist attack on the LGBTQ community. Today, we are honoring those lives lost and we raise our flag for unity, freedom, and inclusion. So I ask you guys, please, can we get a moment of silence in honor of those lives lost? Okay, so now I want to talk a little bit about my experience in the GSA club. I was introduced to the GSA by a counselor and became a member in April of 2019. Ever since then, I've been, I have become more involved in the events that went on in this club. This club also encouraged me to come out as gay to my friends and my family comfortably. And yeah, so lastly, I wanna say a few thank yous. First, I wanna say thank you to my friends and family that proudly accepted me for who I am and who I hope to become in the future. And next, I wanna say thank you to my friends in the GSA club for welcoming me into their safe space with open arms. And lastly, I want to say thank you to all of you who came to show love and support to the LGBTQ community. Give yourselves a round of applause. Thank you, everybody. And goodbye. One more time, give Tristan a round of applause. Thank you, Tristan, for coming up and sharing your experience. You know, this is new for so many members of the youth community that are part of the GSA and the LGBTQ community. But I can tell you it's new for many others. A few years ago, as weddings and same-sex marriages uh, became law and became allowed, I'd have couples calling me up who had been together for, for decades, people in their 
40s or 50s or 60s who finally had the opportunity to get married. And then so those are some of the most memorable weddings that I remember doing uh, over my years as mayor. And it's, uh, it's so very heartening to see them together and to see them be, to be able to celebrate uh, who they are and to celebrate as part of the community. Our next speaker has been with us uh, several times. Uh, gra grab a chair if you have one because she will go on and on. Uh, she is just like her sister, Jen, her older sister. But please welcome Anna Trachler for a few words. Anna, come on over here. She's a great speaker. And uh, she's such an inspiration to the community and especially to the LGBTQ community. Anna. Hello, everyone. I would like to start by thanking everyone for attending our fourth annual flag raising for our GSA community here in Carteret. It means the world to me that I see all your faces coming out even during this pandemic. Um, I'm very mad at Hanifa because she left her mask up here. I'll be bringing it back to you. Corona is not over. <laughs> but it means the world to me that we have been able to celebrate such an event for the fourth year in a row. It's also such an honor to speak at this event for the fourth year in a row. With all that is going on in the world today, I think it is important that we remember where Pride started, at the Stonewall Riots 51 years ago. If it weren't for those riots, we wouldn't be where we are in terms of LGBTQ rights and equality today. And I think that we should all keep that in our minds as we continue to honor and celebrate Pride. When we celebrate Pride, we want to honor ourselves and our identities. And with people here in the year of 2020 still trying to convince us that we were born wrong, our pride is more important than ever. My heart goes out to the members of Carteret's LGBTQ community and the communities of our neighboring towns who have been stuck in quarantine with relatives that are bigoted. I want them to know that they are loved and embraced by their community and that they do not have to hide who they are to receive love and compassion by the members of their community. I myself have been blessed to be in a home where my parents have loved and accepted me no matter who I was and I was able to come out comfortably, although it wasn't how I wanted to, but it was fun because they loved me anyway. With that, I want to give everyone around me who is from a home where they feel like they cannot come out safely, all the love I have in my heart and all the compassion I have in my heart because they deserve it. Because no matter if you are gay, lesbian, bisexual, trans, queer, you deserve to be loved and it is not a sin, it is not wrong, you were not born a specific way, and it's not something that needs to be fixed. And the fact that we are in 2020, and there are still people who are convinced, that have been brainwashed, that we have to be changed to be normal, is disgusting. And we have to continue to work together as a community to end that. During this quarantine, I've come to a kind of realization of my own with my regarding my own gender identity that I am non-binary and I use they them pronouns now openly and freely and it is so uplifting that I was able to come out to my friends in my community and my family com in my community and have them accept me with open arms and instantly use my pronouns out of nowhere like it was nothing no big change and that means the world to me as someone who was so ashamed that I've identified this way for so long and now it's different and the fact that we have such an open community with our GSA, with Dylan at Pathways, with Anna, who is not here, cringe, and our friends at the GSA and our friends in Carteret that I can come out freely and I don't have to be ashamed and I am loved no matter what. And I wanna take that love that I receive and disperse it to everyone who feels ashamed that they are the way they are. So I wanna thank you to my co-head at the GSA Anifa Larkin, I love you so much, boo. And I want to thank you to all our new members of the GSA that I see here. Thank you for showing up. I know the quarantine is crazy. 2020 has just backhanded us over and over and over again, but we're still standing here and that's important. And y'all should all give yourselves a clap on the back. So again, I want to say thank you all for showing up, even during these crazy, crazy times. The fact that you came out here to show your support means the world to me and it fills my heart with joy and it tells me that even in these twisted times with the Trump administration trying to revoke our rights, that there are still good people and you are the good people that are going to change this world. Thank you.
give Anna a round of applause. Always enlightening and very, uh, very well done. Is there anyone else who'd like to come up and say a few words? Dylan, our coordinator for Pathways, you're going to come up and say a few words? We're going to put Dylan on the spot here. He said when he got here this morning, he said, Mayor, I'm prepared. I've got a uh, five-page speech, so I hope you don't mind. I said, not at all, not at all. There you go. Thank you. That is exactly how our conversation went <laughs> this morning. Um, I was not prepared to speak. Um, I kind of just wanted to give the floor and the microphone to those who needed the voice the most. But to be a facilitator to the GSA members has been an honor. It's been humbling, to say the least. It has been amazing to work with you all this year, even through perhaps the strangest times I've ever lived through. Um, however, resiliency still shown through. And it's, it's amazing. It's amazing. Um, I'm really happy to keep working with you guys next year and to keep this going and to grow more with you as an individual and as a group and as a facilitator of the GSA. <laughs> um, thank you so much. Thank you for coming, guys. I really appreciate it. Um, love y'all. As you know, Dylan is a facilitator for the, for the high school GSA and Pathways along with Anna Pepe. Um, I do want to remind everyone that as you leave the Pathways of the high school GSA, Carteret also has a GSA, an adult uh, GSA that partners out of our Blazing Star Art Center. Brian Chen is our arts director over there. Give him a round of applause. Many of you have been to the Blazing Star. It's a program that we continue to support as an outlet and, uh, and to support the LGBTQ community. So with that, thank you for coming out one more time. Give yourselves a round of applause. Wave the flag. We do have some light refreshments over there, individually wrapped uh, bagels and, uh, and rolls and some uh, water and juices. So please make sure you social distance if you can take your mask off and enjoy the beautiful day. Thank you again. God bless you all.